Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great uh, Taco Tuesday. I'm actually back here at the Red Brick House. We've been, uh, we're doing some things to kind of get ourselves in a better place as far as uh, broadcasting and doing our work here from the Red Brick House. Basically, you know, we're finishing the place off and we are, um, um, making it so we can actually live here and do more and more things. The kitchen downstairs is looking fantastic. We've got a bedroom, and now I'm kind of working on getting the studio set up so that way we'll be able to take care of business. And um, I have something special coming up. Um, I'm going to be doing an interview later on today uh, dealing with the Michael Irvin situation where we're going to be able to get a lot of background on what actually may have happened as far as the settlement goes and stuff. So be looking forward to that. And if you can, please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get to 60,000 subscribers. We're a little over 2,000 away for my birthday in October. So we're getting final word about two hours ago that um, Aaron Rodgers, Achilles, is definitely torn. Um, they kind of beat around the bush. They said some prayers. They were hopeful that it wasn't broke. It wasn't a uh, tour, but it's done. And that, of course, four plays into the 2023, 2023 season, Aaron Rodgers is done. Now, the question may be is, will Aaron Rodgers come back? Because this can be uh, an eight months, 18 months type of an injury, depending on how it is. It's one of the hardest injuries to actually come back. And you start thinking about the age of Aaron Rodgers, although Aaron Rodgers said he could be like Tom Brady and play till he's like 45 years old. So we'll see where that goes. Now, I will be the first one to say I don't like Aaron Rodgers because of what he has done to the Dallas Cowboys over, over the years. He has literally destroyed us, demoralized us, and literally made us his bitch. That was one of those games that I was looking at and saying, God, can, can we get over the hump with Aaron Rodgers? Can we beat him like we finally did with Tom Brady in the playoffs? And now we won't get that chance. Uh, I will say, because a lot of Cowboy fans right now are kind of sighing, you know, doing a sigh of relief. Oh, man, we ain't got to play Aaron Rodgers, man. It's going to be easy. Don't think it's not going to be easy because I think about how the team rallied around Cooper Rush. They found a way to win last night via Josh Allen turning the ball over four times. Had he not turned it over four times, maybe three times, they would have gotten the win. They got a lot of help from from Josh Allen. Let, let's be clear. They got a lot of help. And maybe they got divine intervention. Maybe it was the NFL script. I don't know. All I know is right now, Jets fans are losing their mind. I have not seen uh, Mike Greenberg I don't know if he's okay, but I'm looking and listening to Rich Eisen. I started listening to it, and I feel bad for the Jets right now. Let, let's go to the tape. Start today's show in 1999. Oh, okay. Because I just want to give everybody an idea of what it's like to be a Jet fan and why, despite the optimism and the excitement and the hope, of the last four or five months of Aaron Rodgers deciding his intention to play for the Jets and then actually signing with the Jets, being acquired by the Jets, how there is always underneath this excitement and hope an undercurrent of absolute misery. 1999 is where we start on this program. The last time... The Jets, as we know, had Bill Parcells as their head coach. Okay. There was tons of hope fresh off of an AFC championship game mm -hmm. appearance. I was there in Denver with my Wesley Walker jersey I wore in Camp Low Condo with my name still Wesley stitched Walker. in the back. Wow. So you knew which bunk to return the laundry to after it was cleaned. I still fit in it. I was on ESPN for two plus years and I went and sat in the last row of Mile High Stadium because I'm a diehard Jet fan and also a masochist. <laughs> I watched the Jets take a halftime lead and then blow it against John Elway and Terrell Davis and the rest of the 
Broncos. And despite all of that, lots of hope because Bill was back. And so Mm -hmm. were the hopes for the Jets to maybe run it back and make the Super Bowl. And Vinny Testaverde took the field that day on opening day of the 1999 season. And a quarter and a half into the game, Curtis Martin, future Hall of Famer, fumbled as Willie McGinnis popped it loose against the Patriots. And Vinny went to go back and grab the fumble, loose ball, and blew out his left Achilles tendon. Ouch. Carried off the field. There goes the Jets' hopes, even though Tom Tupa went in the game and threw a touchdown pass to Keyshawn right (laughs) after that to put the Jets up 14-10. to But we all knew... Despite Tom Tupa performing admirably, Super Bowl hopes were over. And as a matter of fact, can confirm they were. Parcells gone, Belichick in, and he signs a cocktail napkin resigning. And the rest we all know is history, which is why we Jets fans know we're not allowed to have hope for very long. Cut to the present day because last night, guess who was an honorary captain for the kickoff last night? Vinny Testaverde. No way. Oh. There he is. Damn. He jinxed No him. way. In all honesty, wow. I, saw, I heard this. I saw this. I thought to myself, what the hell is he doing there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't see I did not I didn't see because that. today Jeez. is the 24th anniversary of the day Vinny blew out his left Whoa. Achilles tendon. Today, Twenty- September, you got to be 12th, kidding me. 1999, that happened. Jeez. Damn. Now we all know it's not Vinny's fault that Aaron Rodgers four snaps in blows out his left Achilles tendon. As of this very morning, confirmed, clean tear, it's over. Four snaps. That's all we were allowed Four snaps. by the football gods. Four snaps before his left Achilles tendon snapped as Leonard Floyd came in. And the turf... Of Met Life grabs another. Aaron Rodgers oh. went down and it looked innocent, but you could see on the photograph on the screen right see here on our Roku channel feed, Leonard Floyd on top of the left leg, and that is an unnatural way for a 39 year old Achilles yep. tendon to be pressured. Mm-hmm. Couldn't believe that he limped and then sat down Sad. over. Mm. And I kind of feel, just in case maybe folks out there still don't comprehend what it's like to feel as a Jet fan. Let's go pop culture. Remember the movie The Shining? Oh, yes. Scatman Crothers. I just saw it a he was a caretaker so far back. of the Overlook Hotel. Hotel. Yes. Denny. And he had the ability to communicate with a young boy at the Overlook Hotel in snowy Colorado. All the way from Florida. Mm. He was able to shine with this young boy, knowing there was trouble trying to save him. Mm. This entire time, when Rodgers announced on Pat's show, I have an intention to play for the Jets. I'm out of my darkness therapy. I intend to play for the Jets. And then we waited, and it happened. And then he shows up. And not only does he show up, he commits. He's hanging out. He's going to the Tonys. He's going to Taylor Swift. He's just Mr. New York. And he's not only locked in, but the fan base is locked in, and the Jets are locked in, and they are here for him, and he's here for them. And he's talking about redeeming Mekhi Becton, and he's talking about how beautiful the New York City is. Skyline is, and he's talking about how he might be here for a long time and hand things off to Zach Wilson, and he's going to be here for a long time, and you're about to have 20 years of greatness, Jets fans. 
Start now. Every single time I thought to myself, this is just like Scatman Crothers flying all the way from Florida, taking a flight, getting into a snowcat, going all the way up the mountain in the middle of a snowstorm just to get to the whole Overlook Hotel in time to get an axe in the chest. Four snaps in, axe in the chest. Wow. All work and no play makes the football gods clearly dull and boring. (laughs) They can't stop kicking the Jets and the Nards. Damn. Four snaps. Wow. And then a crazy thing happened as Zach Wilson came out after Mm. all of this. And I thought to myself... This thing's a wrap. We all did in the United States of America watching this, right? I, yeah. I'm, I'm going to end it there. Crazy thing happened. I'm, I'm going to end it there because now the problem for the Jets is, the Jets, 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 is they've got to figure out what the plan is. So Jerry Jones was asked, would he consider trading Cooper Rush or Trey Lance? And his response would be, um, you know, he was asked, has the Jets reached out to you yet? He said, I can't imagine what it would be to make that type of a trade. But the facts are, just as they do, we could need Rush in a play, and we did last year. We did the year before. Boy, especially when you got all the promise we got, to compromise yourself with the depth at the position would be very unlikely. In other words, what he's saying is, if you want one of those guys, you got to come correct and give us some major compensation. That's basically what he's saying. He's not saying, no, we wouldn't consider it. He's saying, to make that type of trade, I can't imagine what it would be. Now, let me say what it shouldn't be on any trades for the Cowboys. It shouldn't be a number two pick. Number two picks just don't work out for the Cowboys too often. Okay, that is like lightning striking twice. That is like Vinny Testaverde tearing, rupturing his Achilles 24, almost 24 years to the day that Aaron Rodgers did. Now, here's the thing that's coming around right now is um, one of Aaron Rodgers, former teammates is talking about the turf. And you start to think about, is the turf, because it just grabs a hold, much like the the gloves grab a hold of the football, is it grabbing hold and just not giving enough that your body has to be the thing that gives? Now, if you ask me, I believe part of the problem is with all these soft tissue injuries that we get, the pulled groins and everything else, is guys don't really get taxed before the games. Yes, you have 14 padded practices, but you can't tackle anybody to the ground. I think the NFL has done themselves a disturbance. I understand we don't want concussions. Now you've got the padded helmets and things like that, right? You've got the padded helmets to cut down on the concussions and things. You have the knee braces that the offensive lineman and defensive lineman can wear. But the reality is, is the only way you get ready for football, and and if you've played football before, you know, you're all summer or training, getting stronger and faster and everything else, and you're running. But there's nothing like playing football with those pads and hitting somebody except playing football in pads and hitting somebody. And if you're only, you know, hitting the pads, you know, hitting the, the dummies, you're not actually tackling somebody and learning how to fall. Make no mistake about it. This is the first time Aaron Rodgers has been touched since playing against the Lions to end the season last year. That's the first hit. The first hit he's taken. Your body's just not ready for it. And to me, that's the reason why you see bad play, of course, because nobody plays anybody in preseason. And soft tissue injuries, and these Achilles. Your body has not been stretched out, warmed up. You know, it's like a callus on your hand. When you first start doing work and things, you get blisters. But after you start doing it, you get the calluses. It hardens your skin up. It gets you tougher. It gets you prepared. You don't feel the soreness and the pain that you did when you first started doing it. 
The NFL players aren't getting past those blisters and things. They're not getting into the calloused body that can take on these hits. And it's sad because, you know, you start losing. You know, they do all these things to protect the quarterback. You know, if you don't get them in shape, if you don't get their bodies callous and ready to play, that's what you get. All right, good people. I hope you're having a great day, and I will see you soon.